Kia ora koto. This is Christina Hopner from the Mahara Project at Catalyst in Wellington, New Zealand. And today I'd like to take you through a number of the new features for Mahara 18.10, which was released in October 2018. We are going to take a look at um, highlighted features because we've had quite a number again in this release and therefore want to showcase the ones that are of bigger nature um, or also could have um, a huge influence. Uh, <coughs> Kia ora koto. This is Christina Hopner from the Mahara Project at Catalyst in New Zealand. Today I would like to take you through a number of the new features that have been released in Mahara 18.10, the version of Mahara that came out in October 2018. We would like to thank all our contributors that have um, put code into Mahara, translated Mahara, um, supported us through funding, of new features or bug fixes and also reported um, bugs and looked into adding new feature requests and helping us with usability questions, theming questions and so on. Everybody who's contributed to this new version of Mahara, thank you very much. So let's take a look at some of the new features um, that I've picked out to take a look at today. And of course, you're very welcome to um, look at all of them um, on your own in order to familiarize yourself with them. Now, the first new feature that you will see is that we've changed around the navigation a bit. Um, you'll see that we are now sorted into create, share and engage and everything that you can create on your portfolio site in your personal area can be found under the create button so all the artifacts but also all the pages and collections that you can set up in order to create your portfolios that you can then share with other people and under share you can also find the menu item in order to find portfolios that have been shared with you under Engage, you find all the group items and in order to collaborate with others on projects or simply also in discussion forums. Manage holds our export and import features because they didn't quite fit into the Create, Share and Engage categories. You can find all the user-related items, so the ones relating to your account, in the user menu. And the first one there is uh, going to your profile page. The profile itself is where you update a certain profile information. And then you also have the profile pictures before you get to the settings. Now, if you are a site administrator or an institution administrator, you can set up an institution to use institution tags. Once you've done that in the settings, you see a new menu item called tags and there you can pick the institution for which you want to give tags and then create them by setting up a tag, simply um, adding it and then saving it. And from that moment on, everybody in your institution can make use of it. As soon as a tag has been used, um, it is not possible to delete it anymore because now it is in the hands of um, the individual students. Now, if I'm becoming one of the students, I can use the tags in all of my artifacts and also when creating a page. So just creating a page. Um, I can select from any of my artifacts and I can find um, any of the institution ones by starting to type the institution name and then they show up or alternatively of course I can also just start typing the tag itself and then if I want to use it as institution tag selected you always see the institution in front and can work with it. 
Now, another new feature that you can see in, immediately on this page is the one create via tags. This is now the possibility where you can create a page and automatically put all content that is available in your personal portfolio area, add that directly onto the page as long as you have tagged it with one or two particular tags or more. If you use more than one tag, please be aware that all of these tags need to be on all your learning evidence in order for them to show up on the page. If you only use one tag, then um, everything that has been tagged that way um, will appear. So you also only see those tags that you have uh, used in order to create the page. Now, as soon as you hit the save button, your page will be populated um, with the items that have been tagged um, with, in my case, the, the tag PhD, and they are placed onto the page. You can then move your blocks still around to your liking, and you can also delete blocks if you like, in order to fully curate this particular portfolio page. Also, if you add another um, file, for example, that you then tag PHP in your files area, it will not be added automatically to your page unless, of course, you've selected a folder to be shown um, so that you still have full control over the page and can decide what goes on it and what doesn't. Um, but at least the initial creation of the page is made easier. Now, another tag-related item is the possibility to um, see all content from a particular person based on a, pe um, based on a tag. So in this case, I'm looking at the portfolio from James Jets. Um, he hasn't really put anything on his portfolio yet, but I do see that he started out using the tag Benz. And so when I click on it as somebody else, so not as James, I can now see the tag content of James in a list format, similarly to the My Tags page, um, so that you can also filter for different artifacts and portfolios, sort by name and by date, and really see what he has tagged with band in this case. Um, I still only have access to the portfolios that contain artifacts um, pertaining to that tag to which I have access. And if I'm entering a, a portfolio via secret URL, for example, then I can only see items relating to that particular portfolio because the secret URL doesn't know whether I can also have access to a different portfolio or not. Now, these were all the um, tag related items that we have put into Mahda um, 18.10. Now let's take a look at some other um, features and in this case a feature that or features that you can use in groups but also in institutions and site uh, portfolios in order to assist with template creation. So if we create a portfolio that is made for assessment purposes, um, then you can, of course, give a tag as well, and you can now set instructions. That way, you don't need to put a, uh, a block, a text block onto the page anymore and then ask your students to remove them. Now you can write instructions immediately that are then also visible to an assessor. Furthermore, you can lock blocks, meaning that once blocks are put on a page, they cannot be removed anymore. And of course, you can do all the other changes that you like, um, changing the layout, adding skins, and so on. Now, the instructions are visible both in edit mode and also in the view mode. And now I can put um, some text on here and prepare my template. 
One feature that I'm also going to show immediately, or two other additional features, are the peer assessment block and the sign off and verification block. The peer assessment block allows somebody um, to give a blind peer assessment, meaning that the peer assessor cannot see what the portfolio author has written on their portfolio, um, therefore really making a blind assessment. With the sign off and verification block, I can facilitate the workflow um, in an assessment portfolio by indicating visually when a page is ready for review by an assessor or by a manager. And when that said person has verified the portfolio and the learner can take it to the next step. Another pot, um, feature that helps with the um, template creation is the possibility to automatically copy a group portfolio into the accounts of all existing group members. So when you're on the sharing screen, sharing screen for that portfolio, you can allow copying and then also make a copy for all existing group members. And group members in that sense really is the norm, the regular group members. Um, namely students. Administrators and tutors do not get that portfolio copied into their accounts because typically they don't have to fill in uh, templates. However, since copying is generally allowed on this page, they could still copy it into their account manually if required. Now, I'm a student that is a member in this course and I see that my assessment portfolio, that, not that one, um, the assessment portfolio that I've just set up in the group um, is now automatically copied into my account so that I can edit it and also share it with others. And you are already familiar with the editing possibilities. Um, of our regular Mahara page, but what you cannot see on this one here, because we locked the blocks, is that you can delete those blocks. A student can revert that um, setting in the settings themselves, so that they, if they do want to delete things, they can do so. Um, but at least at first view, it is not possible um, to delete things, therefore preventing accidental deletion of portfolio components. So now I can add my self-assessment and then share this portfolio with a peer and also a manager directly. So I select my peer and the new thing is that you now have the peer role available and you can also select a manager um, who can get the manager role. Now logging in as a peer, I can see the portfolio that Percy has created. And in contrast to Percy though, I do not see the self-assessment. I can only do my peer assessment. I can view the instructions as needed and then provide my assessment which I can save as draft first, so that I can still make changes before the portfolio author sees it. And then I can also publish it. Publishing means that the portfolio author, um, so Percy, can see that peer assessment, but a manager cannot yet see it because I have the sign off and verification um, functionality turned on. So right now, if I look at the portfolio of um, Percy, I will not be able to see it. I cannot see the peer assessment. Now that the peer assessment has been published though, um, when Percy looks at the portfolio again, um, he can see the peer assessment of Paula and then can, can at the same time still continue working on his portfolio, for example. And when he's ready to 
send it to his uh, manager, then he can sign off on it. The sign off is currently not tied to a submission of a portfolio, so they can still continue adding elements or removing elements from the portfolio. Now becoming a assessor and looking at the portfolio again from Percy, I can now see the peer assessment and also that the portfolio has been signed off and I can now do the verification indicating as well that um, the portfolio is ready for any other workflow components. Another feature of Mahara is the possibility to view a timeline. I can enter a portfolio and look at it and then also look at old versions of the portfolio um, because I have a timeline available. Initially though, I would need to save a state of a portfolio to the timeline. So let me quickly make a change to the portfolio. Um, so for example, I don't want to have the resume in it anymore. So I remove that, place this new version onto my timeline and can then also view the timeline. You have to save a version of your portfolio manually to the timeline. Um, so there's no automatic um, backup being done. So now in this case, I created a version on the 1st, 3rd, 4th, 6th, and now 24th of October. And so if I wanted to compare my portfolios between the 1st of October and the 24th of October, I can do so because now I have the portfolio available of what it lo looks like on the 24th, uh, on the 1st of October. And now if I switch to the 24th of October, um, which was a version that I've created earlier, um, I, and which we actually just removed the resume from, see that we do not have the resume available anymore, but only every other block that was on the portfolio. So this is a really nice way of really seeing um, how the portfolio has progressed over time, what has changed, and therefore see quickly um, how the versions differ and what I have learned over time as well, because the portfolio does, is supposed to show progress and the timeline will achieve that even more so than regularly adding to the portfolio, because you can go back to a state at the beginning of the semester, for example, see what the portfolio looked like at that time, and then move on, make a ver another version, for example, a month later, then again in the next month and so on, until you can then look back at the portfolio creation process. On this page, you also see that we have the block um, for plans, and that now allows you to change the statuses within the block automatically. And if you were in edit mode, you can also more easily jump into the area for editing individual tasks or the plan itself, and then being returned back to the page. Now, sometimes, unfortunately, we have to deal with objectionable content. And so there is now the possibility to have a report for that and also have a bit more workflow built in. So we have the report objectionable content uh, that allows us to see who the reporter is, whether it affects a page, certain artifact, um, review or review date and what the status is. So if we take a look now here, we see that the project plan page from um, oh, has been reported has been reported by Paula, and the user needs to take some action. So I can now, as administrator, of course, look at the project plan page, which has been set up by James, and I can decide whether the page now is still objectionable or not objectionable anymore. If it is still objectionable. Um, I see the previous complaint and if I had already sent a review of what I wanted the student to change, then I see that here as well, or I can also add more. 
and I can immediately remove the access temporarily to that portfolio by switching the no to a yes and therefore preventing anybody from viewing that portfolio while James needs to um, fix up his page. Now we've looked at a number of the features that are available in Mahara either for the use of templates, working with templates more easily, also a lot of tagging features and um, a number of small other features. Um, one of the other big features that are available in Mahara 18.10 is the assignment submission into an LMS via LTI. In this case, I'm going to demonstrate it using Moodle. Um, where I have set up an external tool activity with the connection to my Mahada site. And then I click the activity itself as, an, at, um, as a teacher. And then I'm being taken to Mahada. And upon the first time of setting up that activity, I need to decide on the assessment settings. So whether a tutor is emailed upon student submission, whether the portfolio needs to stay locked after grading, or whether I want to archive it. Once I have saved uh, these settings, I can log in as a student into the site, and then also click the activity and submit one of my portfolios that is in my account to that assignment. So in this case, I only have one portfolio. So I submit that and I get a notification that the portfolio has been submitted. It is automatically locked in this case. And when I go into the portfolio then as the teacher again, I can see a little grading screen where I have the name of the submitter, what the portfolio is, and when it was submitted, and can now grade that portfolio. LTI only allows us to use a grading scale of um, 1 to uh, 0 to 100, um, which then is translated into the gradebook into the appropriate um, scale that is being used. So I can give my grade. And once I have done that, the grade is being placed into the Moodle gradebook um, so that I can check that then for Paula. So I'm sorry. Um, so I can check that for, yeah, just for this student. And view the activity that they have done. In this case, it was at 99. And therefore, I see, uh, or I have that information collected in the gradebook on the LMS side. Since we are using the LTI functionality for that, um, it does not just work with Moodle, but it also works with other learning management systems. Uh, that you can set up in the Mahala user manual. We already have instructions for Moodle and Canvas and other instructions can follow um, as other learning management systems are being used. This functionality now allows us to conven conveniently submit portfolios into learning management systems and also keep the grade in those systems rather than uh, just keeping it in Mahara. So these were kind of highlights of the new features that um, are available in Mahara 18.10. There are a bunch more and also a huge number of bug fixes again um, that make the use of certain functionalities easier and also um, fixes a number of issues that we had encountered. If you like to read up on these new features, uh, please go to the Mahara user manual and make sure that you're on version 18.10.
where you can also see a brief summary of these new features and um, then can view the entire portfolio. We look forward to hearing from you how you like this new version of Mahara and um, would like to yeah, know your opinion, what you think about it and um, also in particular how you make use of it, whether certain features are more suited to your needs in your environment and which ones you like in particular, um, whether you have ideas for expanding those features and just your general opinion about it. Thank you for your time.